You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Don Beatty. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please enjoy our opening uh, hymn and join along. I'm sure you are familiar with it. I have some scripture readings that I would like to share with you today. The first one is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. 
for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have a second reading to share with you out of the book of Ecclesiastes, beginning in the chapter 3, verse 1. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And finally, a third reading from our New Testament. We are in 2 Timothy chapter 4. For I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Please rise for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up and whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. My name is Dennis Nelson. I'm, uh, 
I was an interim pastor here. I came here in Thanksgiving time, 2002. And I served here for 18 months as an interim, uh, helping this congregation regain its unity and uh, prepare to move on. And my first Sunday here, after church, Doris, right back there, she came up to me, she said, now pastor, if there's any funerals, don't you worry, I'll take care of the meals. I tell you, that's the hardest working woman in Fairwater, right there. She is, and Elto, too. But, uh, you know, I asked my wife, I said, what, my wife is right here, Mara is her name. And we came, we live in Shawano, and uh, I just asked my wife, I said, what do you remember about Don and Doris? And she said, their unity. You know, they were just a, a couple, and they loved and supported each other. You know, when God created Eve for Adam, I think he had a view toward creating Doris and Don for each other. Two people to help each other, support each other, love each other. You know, life is good when you can share it with someone you love. And Doris and Don were blessed with many years of life together and love. And that's what we remember about you too. We became friends and uh, we came down here a few times. We went to the Alto pork chop dinner once. And, uh, and, and Doris and Don have come up uh, to our place with the help of a driver. Yeah, and uh, Ann drove them up, yes. And um, we went for a little pontoon ride, I think, that day, didn't we? And sat out on the back deck, and I just remember, Don was this lanky guy, you know, and he was just stretched out there and enjoying himself and resting on the deck. And uh, we had a good afternoon together there. So... You know, in Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up. Well, that was Don's job, de deciding when it was time to pluck those peas. <laughs> he, he worked for the canning factory, and his job was to go up to places like Plainfield, where they planted peas, and he had to take some samples and bring them back and have them tested and analyzed here to determine when they were just right, just ready to be picked and, and canned. That was Don's job, and he loved it. He enjoyed traveling and going up there and taking samples, and it was hard when he had to give it up. That was hard. And uh, I think he had to give up, he plowed snow for the town of Alto too, right? Yeah, and that was hard when he had to give that up. So, you know, life is a process if, of losing things and giving up things. There's a time to gather and a time to lose, you know. But uh, we have a God who stands above it all. And um, I gotta tell you another story about Doris. <laughs> the hardest working woman in Fairwater right there. But uh, you, they would have a dinner here for the senior citizens every month. And uh, that was a nice social gathering and one, one day, I, they, were, they, were, they were all gathered and eating, and I, I told Doris, I said, oh, Doris, I said, there's a whole bunch of, said, there's a busload of senior citizens that just pulled in here, and they, they lost all their money in the casino, and <laughs> they're hungry, and w could you feed them? Well, you know, Jesus fed the multitude, you know, <laughs> put on some more potatoes, but anyhow. Doris served them all, and uh, whatever Doris did, Don did, and supported her. And so we thank God for this wonderful couple and the many years. How many years did you have together? 71. 71. All right. Well, that's good. And uh, you have set a good example for all of us. And uh, I know that you never had any issues. No. <laughs> it's, you know. 
life is issues. We all have issues, you know. It's what you do about them that matters. So, so it takes love and conviction to, to make it through. So with that, uh, let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Don Beatty, for his uh, life, his witness. We thank you for Doris and her life and witness. We thank you for this whole Beatty family and every one of them in their own way that has served you and witnessed to you. We thank you for this church, Zion Lutheran and Fairwater. Pray that you would bless this church and strengthen this church in its unity and its purpose and its service toward you. Pray that you would let your spirit be upon us here today, that the words of my mouth might witness to the, your truth and your life, and that your, your word and your truth and your light would, would support us our whole life long, as it did Don Beatty. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Well, I like that lesson from John 3. The most important single verse in the whole Bible is verse 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal. That sums up the whole message of the Bible in one verse. If you had to choose one verse, you know, what would it be? That's better than Leviticus 3.16, let the fat parts belong to the priest. <laughs> Way better than Leviticus 3.16, for God so loved the world, yes, that he gave his only son. And it mentions Moses in the wilderness, and the people were in the wilderness wandering for 40 years, and there were these fiery serpents that were biting them and killing them. And they came to Moses, you know, we always turn to God in times of trouble, right? Whoa, Moses, what are we going to do? You know, these little serpents are nipping at us and killing us out here. Ask God for help. So the Lord told Moses to make the image of this fiery serpent and put it on a pole and lift it up. And to this very day, that symbol of a serpent on a pole is used by medical science. When you see that serpent on a pole, that comes from Moses on the wilderness. And whenever you make that, see Moses made the image of the very thing that was killing the people. And all you have to do is lift your eyes and look at that bronze serpent on a pole and you will be healed. You will live. You know in the wilderness, none of us are going to make it out of this wilderness alive. We know that. Yeah, but God had his own, only son, Jesus, lifted up on a cross. And he became the very image of what is killing us. He became our sin. He became our death. He took all those things upon him, upon himself, and overcame them in the resurrection. All you have to do is just lift your ever-loving eyes to look at Jesus on the cross, and you will live. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, just like in the wilderness, they all perished. We here, too, will perish in this wilderness. All things on this earth perish. When you get home, open up your pantry or your refrigerator and start checking the labels. You know, there's an ad on TV when, well, who is it? Aunt so-and-so comes to visit? <laughs> who is that? Expired, 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 going through the refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in this world has an expiration date on it. I want to tell you a secret. In our refrigerator at home, we have a green pepper that's past its prime. You know what I mean? 
It's getting soft and wrinkly. Yeah, it's past its expiration. Mara hasn't found it yet, R.C. <laughs> I bought it a while back and didn't use it, you know. You can go through your canned goods. You got a can of peas? There's an expiration date on it. There's an expiration date on your medicine. There's an expiration date on everything. We live in a world where everything expires. But God says whoever believes in him shall not perish. We live in a perishable world, but those who believe in Jesus shall not perish, but have life to the eons, life eternal. It is a life that begins now by water and the spirit. It is a, a new life from above. You know, the wonderful thing about being a Christian is you can start to enjoy life. You can. You don't have to worry about anything. Whether you live or whether you die, you are the Lord's and nothing can separate you from his love. You have an identity. I am a child of God and an heir of all the promises. You can't scare me. I'm going to get a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> you can't scare me. I am a child of God. Yeah. Or I have kids. Huh? Or I, I taught middle school. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of scary things in this world. But you can't scare me because I am a child of God and an, inher and an heir of all the promises. Yes. You can start to enjoy life. You don't have to worry about a thing because you know who you are and who you belong to. And when your journey on life comes to an end, you know where you're going. You know, this, this body is a perishable body. You know, I look at Don's body and, you know, it's like my green pepper. It's got a little wrinkles, you know. But that's what happens if you're blessed with time. But we live in a perishable world, but one day the perishable will put on the imperishable. So says St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, the perishable shall put on the imperishable. We believe in the resurrection of the body. That always gets me in the creed. We believe in the resurrection of the body. And the body of Jesus was raised from the tomb. The body was gone and the body appeared and the body had flesh and blood. The, the body could eat a piece of broiled fish. You can put your hands here and feel his wounds. It is a tangible body. And one day God will raise this perishable body and we shall put on immortality, an imperishable body. There's no date stamped on us in the resurrection. We shall live to the eons. I like that. To the eons. That's Greek. Latin is eternal. I like to the eons. That's the original language. You shall live to the eons and nothing will ever be able to separate you from the love of God. And in that faith that sustained Don Beatty, we lay his body, his perishable body, to rest. And waiting for that day when Christ will come and call his own and raise them from the dead and give them life eternal, life imperishable, an imperishable body. Don already enjoys a life without end. That's given to us when we are born from above by water and the spirit. You know, you might think that's nothing, but it's the most important thing in your life. And someday we'll all come to know that. And all we can do is just praise God. I go to bed every night and I say the Lord's Prayer in bed and to myself. And at the end where it says, thine be the kingdom and the power and the glory. That word glory is used a lot in John. 
And you can substitute the word love for glory. God's love. Thine is the glory. It is God's love. And all we can do is just praise God and thank God for what he has done for us. There's just nothing that God won't do for you. Amen.
has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and the gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Lord, in your mercy, grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Lord, in your mercy, Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us grace to entrust Don Beatty to your never-failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name, with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing hymn.
Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Don Beatty. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. On behalf of Don's family, I want to thank all of you for being here today to celebrate his life. What a great life he has lived and what a beautiful message we had today. We we're sort of concerned about how many people would be here to be singing all these wonderful songs. While the Beatty family, being quite, uh, you know, music heavy here, uh, they did a wonderful job in leading all of you. And so it was a beautiful uh, message and song today, too. We're going to be going to the cemetery shortly. We ask that you please follow along in procession, and it'll be pretty tight there, but uh, you're all welcome to attend. And following that, there is lunch to be served here. The family requests that you please show up if at all possible. Thank you once again, and as a family exits out of church, we ask remaining relatives and friends, please dismiss yourselves. Thank you. <laughs>